Welcome everyone, and um, it's been a great start so far. Um, we're looking forward to this panel number two um, to build on, on, on the interesting discussions we've had thus far. So welcome to this panel, as you'll seen on the holding slide, it would have, it's called a new electric market designed for non-conventional renewable energy sources. We have a very distinguished panel today, um, and I'm very excited to introduce them quite quickly. We'll have Jorge Arbelto Valencia Marin, the executive director of La Craig. Welcome. Uh, Maria Noemi Arboleda, the, um, the gerente of XM. We have Pablo Corredor, the general manager of PHC, and Mauricio Baez, the um, gerente de desarrollo, the director of development and, and business and MA for ACCIONA. And our moderator, last but not least, Luis Julian Zuluaga, the director of electricity for the Ministerio de Minas y Energía. So um, welcome to all, and I'll pass it over to the moderator, uh, Luis Zuluaga. Over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Herman. Hi, good morning to all of you. First, I want to thank uh, GWEC for this uh, forum, and I am pleased to be accompanied by Jorge Maria, Pablo, um, and Mauricio that, that jointly we will be able to convey everything that it, it is being done in the Colombian wind energy market to integrate renewable energies and materialize that economic recovery that is included in this energy transformation that our country is undergoing. For the forum today, we will hear a presentation by Jorge, or by Craig, uh, that uh, will give a, a very important vision showing the way we are heading, what is being done in the market, how we will be maturing it in all its different areas. And what we have been stating from uh, energy policy after that phase, successful phase of bids that we developed the last year and that we believe has given a very important change on renewables and how competitive and complementary they can be for our grid. Well, now I'll give the floor to Jorge. Jorge, you have the floor. You can start your presentation now. Thank you, Julian, and I greet everybody. Maria, Mauricio, Pablo, and all our attendees to this forum. And I also want to thank Jiwek for having taken into account the commission during this very interesting discussions to build our market. I have been asked to make a brief introduction of market designs for renewable or uh, short term, as William has been mentioning. Fortunately, we were very successful on incorporating renewables during the bid that was made on November uh, that confirmed the interest of investing in Colombia on this type of industry. We had already seen that, that during the bid were eight generation projects with renewable, mainly solar, were granted with firm energy. Well, uh, we see this new trend to have this type of renewable energies in a country. The outcomes of those bids on firm eight uh, of those projects that will be installed in Colombia, and another one that is important of those that have been allocated with 
from energy with contracts that come from the bid carried out on November. So as regulators, as market, we have very important challenges before us, two main concepts that are summarized in one word, flexibility, key word of all the regularity development to the future is flexibility on operation that is required in order to incorporate better or have the system adapt better to the conditions that the operation of variable resources on short time with high variability of uh, energy supply and that imposes us we will be hearing in our panel by Maria Noemi very important challenges at an operational level. Topics that have already found solutions in other parts of uh, the world, but that must be included in Colombia. So uh, Colombia will adapt to the Colombian market. So we have to have flexibility on operations. On the other hand, the possibility that this resource that is variable will have better conditions on the market. The design that is being proposed and that we have been discussing for several years is on intradays. A possibility of optimizing throughout the day generation resources coming from the different plants installed on the system. Once again, this has to do with flexibility, not operational one, but the possibility that the mer market must have in order generations plans to adapt to the conditions that the nature will be giving them. With solar, wind, hydraulic, of flow, or water flow as we call it in Colombia. And so those kind of resources of generations which are variable in nature will have the possibilities or new options to be adjusted for its participation in the market. Obviously, assuming that the rest of the plan that had been designed with conventional plants, with a water storage for hydroelectricals, or with a possibility of regulating the input of their resource on electric or carbon gas that have a regulation, uh, re be regulated by somebody, a person, so now the market needs to adapt and the agents that have been participating in a certain way is, have to start to think in these markets that will have changing conditions permanently and that will have to participate in a different way, adjusting to those changing conditions of that supply. In order to achieve um, the cost effectiveness of uh, renewables on the market. So I will summarize and I wanted to highlight this concept of flexibility that has been established as a requirement for the design of the electric market. And I say flexibility. I'm not going to free things or no. We're talking about changing conditions permanently, very rapid changes, the need that the system, the market, on the commercial side and on the operational side, the system will adapt to those changes to have the availability of resources, a regulation that will enable to have an adjustment to, in order to have a reliable operation, secure operation and cost benefit, cost 
in order to have that benefit for the final user. That is the most important concept. And in addition to all that, that has to do with renewables, adaptation, what we have seen in the last years, the pandemia that we have been undergoing has shown us that regulation has to adapt to all those conditions that are external to the market that are worldwide that can create demand changes. We change to a demand to 200 megabytes per day. The demand then follow days after of about 15%. How can the market adapt to those new conditions? How can we manage all those market that are complementary to the electric one, like gas, identify the different needs of a minimum gas demand in order not to affect the production fields in the country. We have to add the variable of external factors. And obviously, as I have mentioned, we have to be flexible. That is a fundamental concept that we must take into account in the regulations in the future. Key element that we have to work on in Colombia, not only from the regulation side, but also on the company side. Normally, those that participate in the market and will be participating in the future in the market that will be arriving, that will be developing the projects. We have to think about this flexible rules, adaptable to the changing conditions of the uh, environment, not only of the market, but global conditions, I ha as I have mentioned, that will enable us to have the best benefit on the different conditions and respond to the demand appropriately. And I will leave it there, Julian, so the other panel members can give their opinions. I don't want to go into the detail of how the market will be, if there will be so many intraday, or if it's gonna be this way or the other, um, because that is a regulation that we are just um, deciding upon. There are proposals of consultancy groups that were developed 2018, others that Pablo, you had the opportunity of accompanying us to simulations that we did at the CRE uh, uh, according to the studies carried out on 2018. What we are expecting to have at the dispatch level in the future, and not only to optimize dispatching energy in the future, but incorporate service provision the upwards and downward ramps, other type of services from generations in order for the system to work. So we hope that in new design of the market, the demand will be participating more actively and that we have a piecemeal um, transformation. But in the middle term, we expect that the demand will have a relevant role to play on the middle term. They already have it at the long term. Um, we are seeing what are the prices they are able to pay right now. They cannot afford it yet, but well, we expect that we can include all those issues on regulation, participation of the demand, complementary additional services, and I don't know if there is another concept uh, that slips out of my mind, but well, we hope to have that regulation be published for consultation uh, the first quarter next year, the latest. We hope to have it ready by the end of the this year. We are doing all the writing at this moment, and uh, we hope to have active participations. We will welcome your comments. 
on it. So this redesign of the market of the electrical Colombian market will enable us to have a much more efficient uh, network. Thank you, Jorge. Wonderful overall for the discussion that we would like to have on this panel. Addition, in addition to all that, I would state that there's something very important that has to do with the flexibility because we need to change and that is for all participants in the market. The first task, we have to overcome all that inertia that we carry from the market back in 1995 that clearly uh, was already showing us that changes should be made. So even if the panel says a new design of the market for renewables, I would also say that we have reached the point where the new changes and the new designs are with the renewables and not for the renewables. Renewables are a reality nowadays, and it is very important to have that in mind. Since the law on renewable energies of Colombia created very important conditions in order to incorporate these technologies in our grid. The minister dream, uh, had an approach of resilience, complementarity, and adjustment to all climate change commitments. There was a factor quite important that is competitiveness. And the market we saw, and it has been said by many consultants and the studies carried out by the Commission, where the competitiveness of the market was not what we expected. So there's a series of regulation changes that are covering that. And the first question is related to this issue. The first question is how do you see the priorities on the electrical market reforms on Colombia to eliminate the provisional, certain provisions in order to adapt them to renewables? I would like to have your point of view of each one of you, and I will have to hear the companies on what is additional. Hi, good morning. Uh, to our colleagues and all of those that are joining us today. Thank you for having invited us to participate in this forum and to be with experts on this process. I think that uh, as an introduction, I would like to talk about the approach of our vision, the understanding of the market in the last years since 2017 and bring about some items that will be useful for our discussion in this panel and the purpose of the forum. Back in 2017, I think that is the macro benchmark that we had, a benchmark exercise that the Economic World Forum did that they translated it and said it is Energy Architecture Performance Index. In a certain way, they wanted to recollect the data on the triangle of energy, how 127 countries were ranking on economic development, development, sustainability, environmental sustainability, and energy transformation. The macro rating that we had at that time, Colombia was ranked as number eight, uh, uh, we were in the top 10 with Uruguay and the rest of uh, the countries were European countries. So according to that economic forum exercise is double clicking uh, that at the time we could already identify the needs of, of policies that the country needed to make in order to guarantee energy transformation. The index that I'm mentioning is a transition index that had been mentioned a while ago 
because we went up uh, nine positions. And this architectural ranking had a series of variables in order to evaluate how willing the, com the country was in order to undergo a transition, energy transition. As a reference, we were expecting policies to move forward to the transition, seeing the worst level of the ranking indexes, and that is where we saw that we had to, we occupied uh, positions 66 out of 127. So we needed to optimize the efficiency of transportation for fuels, that is another uh, policy guideline, and identify the need to increase access to electrification. At that time, we were ranked with 97% of coverage. The ranking that that position was position, uh, ranking 88. So if you look at it today, we can see that these guidelines were based or have been the base for what we have as policy regarding diversification, particularly electromobility. That is the bet that the previous minister, Maria Fernanda, uh, wanted to increase electrification from gas coverage in order to replace the use of uh, firewood and other fuels. So at a macro level back in 2017, we started to have a clear road. And part of the offers in one of the indexes that had been analyzed, um, we ranked third on the energy production and that we had a good um, income throughout that sector, according to our GDP. So for a company as us, that is a thing that can be materialized. In 2018, we uh, retook that indicator because we were at a market that is mostly residential or industrial consumption. There are great consumers that you can just count with the fingers in your hands. And the, there is a dominion of other industrials that include that 30% of the demand. We are in a market without a vocation, uh, vocation to a long term because of the hydrology or ideological scheme, and back in 2018, we saw that we didn't have long-term contracts with some of the agents present in our market. And that obviously confirmed, once again, the vision that we had according to this electrification gap. Upon that base, we started to react. So we started to incorporate non-conventional renewable energies. We didn't start to think about if we were going to be favoring or neutrality on energy. We started just our task to make policies, act as regulators, and we identified the vulnerabilities, the particularities, the specifications, and it started to design a system for the market responding to the new needs. Market system had been designed for some resources and in order to do things in a certain way, but that response, little by little, started to change with the CRE in, in regulation initiatives and the guidelines from the ministry. So we acknowledge that the development, at least in our, we, window time up to date enable us to have certain con the right conditions. We're not talking about the income of renewables. We are talking about moving forward in the diversification as such. Thank you so much, Mauricio. Here I understand according to your presentation competition of the action that have been 
taken from policy and regulation in order to provoke that change. So far, do you consider they have been successful? But now I ask the question to Pablo, and I will uh, repeat the question. What would be the priorities to reform the electrical market in order to eliminate the variables of having uh, coming to the market the non-conventional renewable energies? Thank you once again, Julian. It is a great satisfaction to share this panel with our panel members and all of those that are joining us. According to the competition and barriers, well, well, it is clear that within the trans energy transition process, if we look at it in an orthodox way, I think that they put three, four, or whichever the number of these that you want to include to it, They are aiming decentralization. Enable with the technological side of the decentralization, going to a democratization. The more actors there will be, the higher the number of competition or competitors, we will obtain much more efficiency on resources and the prices. That's what we have been, and the bids have been very important for that purpose. Regulations uh, issued by CRE to this regard, according to the law 1715, and what we have been seeing so far on the progress of, from the regulatory viewpoint. It is important, however, to take into account some issues that are essential in order to have more competition. Information. I think that this market has been designed for an um, information system for many participants in a very centralized way. If we, have, if we want to have competition, you need to have many players involved, and some of them small. And then the consumer as a final consumer role. With the type of data that we give, if it's a large number of data, it's not completely open for this new investor, nor the new small players that will be participating. So that is a key. I think that it is not com not what is required for the competition, that's data side, information side. And that is what we look at uh, uh, when we advise the small participants. Information is so wide, but this is a barrier for them, that to start with. And the second barrier, obviously, we have been working on, on it a lot, is free access connection the connection systems, the separation or the approval of a connection concept, reserve capacities on the network. If they don't use them, that is creating barriers. And the minister is saying, well, we want to eliminate those barriers. And that is very important. And I think that the mission has stated it during our first panel. The free access to the grid is for the competition and for the market that is being created. And it will be key for all wind power generation at a small and large scale. We have also talked about its link with the intradays and additional services, start with a storage, mm -hmm. and certainly we will have to be extending it to other services. A storage can provide other services 
on, gener on the generation side, on transportation side, and trading side or behind the meter. There are so many multi-use possibilities for storage that is essential because it will become a, a player that will improve competition, not only reliability, quality, but also all, all the other services that it can provide. So on that side, to move forward quickly, that information on the market, intraday, uh, storage, access to the grid, it's not only access, but the regulation for connections, but how the grid is expanded. 115 kilobits and below, it's not the same thing that a higher one is at a lower scale and the other one at a large scale. The supply will be on the grid operators and maybe not that well synchronized according to the needs that we are seeing with our long cycles for decision making, governance of those decisions, sometimes is complex. And I do believe that we have to be flexible, flexible on the expansion, SPLs and that are being operated by the grid, the, to have more speed, more flexibility, and that is where the importance of the use of technology comes about. How we will be storing, how we will be doing so many things. So we have to adapt the regulation very quickly to all of this. But I just wanted to point out these uh, issues on the short-term market, the participation of new agents, on the demand and the small investors, and the grid, its connection, expansion, digitalization, to, be, to have it much more flexible, access that will guarantee much more competition. Thank you, Pablo. I think that those four factors that you are stating are very important. And to give the floor to Maria Noemi, that is representing the operator and the market, it's clear that all this competition, with a question that has been asked in the chat, according to the time slips, uh, competition as the next stage of development of the market. Noemi, what can you tell us about two aspects on competition? And uh, please tell us about the rates according to the schedules. First of all, I would like to refer to Julian. Well, first of all, uh, welcome the organizing. It's a great pleasure to be among this uh, panel members and having you as a moderator and our audience uh, that is hearing us. I want to just uh, take bits and bits from what has been said before and establish priorities that I don't want to repeat, but there's something very relevant about what Jorge has mentioned flexibility, everything that has to be do with interoperability, that is one of the key aspects. Flexibility of the grid is very, very important. It can mean a barrier on the anticipated weight in certain areas. The regulation is necessary for everybody to continue with the works that enable to do operations timely. As you have seen, many resolutions have been issued, and we think that it will make the grid uh, much more flexible on generators, and we say it should be very transparent, at least to contain information as a potential of those distributed resources. We all know that it, we are working on topics related to new technologies. Also, we know that this network equipment is also very important because it's using 
that we're all of this is, is, is very important we're going to have this perspective and something as well and I believe that also it is very important to note that well we take into account that all of this is well world is very important I think that Jorge is talking about something that is very interesting so I think that what you were saying regarding this the different differentiated rates that we have it may be depending let's say on rates and all, right now this subject is mainly focused on what we do every day this is something that we take into account in the medium term it is part of these renewable energies that we have and then well as part of this we also know that the panel is also very important when it comes to all of this demand and of course this is very important we have something that we have as well we also talk about everything that we mentioned concerning regulators and well we have many pieces of news in that regard so well it is very interesting to start just somehow enabling this other market stakeholder or actor that we can get from the market all of that could be also part of the rates that we have and it would make things easier so julian i do not know if you have any other questions in this regard right you are in fact answering or addressing the question that we had in terms of this hourly rate and well pablo was also addressing this access to information and for us to be able to get to that last let's say point of market development where we have this type of what we call retail competition how is that going to be useful how, how is that going to work well i think that we can start talking about all of these points uh, everything that is related to technology and everything that we see as part of these platforms we have heard that well we see this as part of the user and this is going to be part of a reality I have been there and of course we can also take all of these points into account and well I think that all of this is quite relevant and quite important but users need to start just really taking all of these mechanisms into account so we need to have this type of platforms as well this platform that can actually enable us to have of course all of these points and we do not only have access Plus we have these users and as we believe just for us to have this let's say point of having more different and also this platform and this retail market as well so that we can actually have access to information and to make decisions on everything that is going on we know that well we need to get into the next stage which is very important we need to continue developing all of this we need to just really start just taking all of this into account. We need to just, well, first and foremost, to make all of this more visible, to start using this information, and for us to start just working on this demand, because we know that demand has got, let's say, very active points as well. All of this is part of that. This is something that we can just need to continue moving forward in terms of everything that we have everything that we have just used and done for us to be able to just continue doing all of this i think that it is very important because all of this needs to be very transparent it is all related to what we do and what we have julian is telling me right here that he's got some connection connectivity issues well maybe yes his connectivity and his signal is not the best so we will continue discussing this so i think that right now very briefly i would like to just address certain points that are very important and as pablo has already mentioned i think that it's important to start just addressing information as we have and like i well i i can tell you that this year of course has not been quite typical because of this pandemic we know how all of this works however we're still working 
So I think that it is very important to just really get more information for us to learn more about the market and for us to really start just learning more about this market rules and everything that we're doing just according to all of these sessions and everything that we're doing. So all of this is going to be very important. We're going to have more, let's say, consistent projects and it is also very important to take into account that we need to have more consultations specifically for resolution 239 of this year. All of that is going to be very important because this is not retail market information. This is user information as such. This is a type of information that we could just somehow report for us to be able to somehow make, let's say, the payments as part of this wholesaler market. So we see this as part of this market and everything that is related to, well, everything that we do. And as a user and user manager, regardless of whether it is somehow regulated or not. So that is going to take us to a different world where we are going to harvest data, where we're going to just really start using this information. And this, all of this is information that I would like to have, for instance, for us to be able just to start just assessing if this information may be available or not, and if it is feasible or not to have it so that we can just really do all of that as part of the market. And this is something that is not going to be addressed just that easily. We're, we're already working on that. We're going to be working with experts in this regard for us to be able to just get to that point. And lastly, also everything that is related to us, like Pablo just mentioned, we're talking about demand. We have addressed all of this. And well, we already have, what do we call this response to this demand in the short term. This is an element that we need to take into account, but everything that is related to energy and rates and all of that is to be very important as well as part of the time of the type of participation that we may have payments and transfer and many more things. So all of this is through all of these incentives that we may have. Of course, we may have this timely or hourly rate, as we already mentioned. And well, basically, we need to just really need to see that, well, we have all of this evaluation of this consumption basis. And also what we see in terms of this demand and when all of this is part of what we have for next year. So lastly, I think that it is very important, this that you just mentioned, this access conditions for those who are also taking part of this agenda and everything that we're doing. As a matter of fact, I think that we were able to do part of this as part of the adjustments that we were trying to make as part of this. And overall, in terms of participation, so I would just like to congratulate you because you have just enacted this resolution because you were just answering or, or meeting this need of having this type of regulation. So it's very important to have it. It is an absolutely key movement on your side. It's going to be very important for us to be able to just make use of all of these resources and funds as part of the system. And this is also going to just allow us to just start distributing everything that we have as part of the Colombian system. And that's pretty much what I have to say. Welcome. Thank you. All right. So connectivity is also is just to check that well this new technology even for us to have and also we have as part of the sector this is something that is key that is very important for us to be able to do that type of and there's something that is very important that is also related to what we have. How are we going to just integrate these new technologies as part of the market? More particularly, just in terms of this 
technology we have and how do you think that the market is going to be adapted for us to be able to do all of this as part of this variability as well as everything that we're doing and just for us to be able to just address this question and to see how everything what me is doing and I believe and just for us just let's do this let's go ahead and just as an enabler of everything everything that we're doing and everything that we see and everything that we're trying to see this is one of the main keys and all of this and well just to have this type of adaptation because we know that it is very important and also just everything that we see as part of this uncertainty that we may have other variables and of course our applications are being also adapted to everything that we have we have many more information the very first thing is related to these tools that can enable a more efficient point we're talking about everything that we do as part of this let's say resources and parts that we do uh, this operation this is very important. This is a tool that we have that is going to provide enough information, timely information, but also the operator and also certainty also increases whenever we talk about this other agents. And also this is important when we talk about this standard development and many more things than many more things. So I would like just to get more quick in other types of, let's say, interoperability and also just to learn what kind of, let's say, retail market it is. And all of this is related to the type of cybersecurity and this type of transactions that we have as well as this traceability and all of this subject so i think that all of this has to do with this transformation culture so we have other tools and other types of let's say users and how this chain works and just to try to just really include and somehow integrate and all of that that we have as part of distributed and also well we have a very important point and also I think that it is very important the important part of here And all of that is going to take us for us to be able to move forward in a quicker pace. So now I would like to pass the floor to Jorge, please. So I think that it is important that will we see this technology, all of this is very important. So this is going to be part of this so this type of technologies is very important so I think that according to this 2019 we have been and able to see how these markets work and also I think that uh, this information and this regulation And this is very important this is part of what uh, all of the experiences and everything that we do and all of that that we are just doing as part of Colombia would like to talk about 
and this is just something that we do worldwide. This is a matter of regular of communications and all of these points as well that we have and all of this that could just be part of this technology platforms and also everything that is related to technologies and many more things all of these things that are going to be part of this market i would like to really address all of this in a very specific part in terms of what this technology communication all of that is very important, but I would like to take all of this into account and to see how this is going to work in the next two years. We need to take into account what would be, let's say, a lesser speed, but to compare it against the speed of other things that we have done as well. And well, so I think that this is something that is permanent. And I think that also these types of communications and everything that you see, these regulators have also just to try to scale up markets and this has all been done just by just having let's say interventions from regulators this is a type of things that we have noticed specifically when it comes to storage and pablo was mentioning this that chris can just really start just doing all of this so what we're going to be doing is to take a look at all of these conditions and all of these things that we're doing and if we have let's say new technology a new generation or maybe another type of technology that can meet those technologies well all of that is going to be part of this specific technology that we have flexibility and regulatory flexibility that i meant and all of this needs to be adaptable and all of this is for us to be able to learn what is needed what is required and what are the types of points that we need to take into account and for us to be able to learn more about what is the point that we have and all of that is applicable to the different technologies and for us to be able to see what can we do as for this technology platform as well and also I think that we need to just go and do all of this and for us to be able to take part into this market. So based on that, all of these technologies and everything that we are addressing, these disruptive technologies have been adjusted to different conditions. And otherwise we have some sort of adjustment, it's some small parts as well. Thank you so much, Jorge. I think that it is key to talk about this self-regulation as Craig is mentioning as well. So Pablo, I do not know what you think from this, let's say, standpoint for you as a consultant, for instance. So I think that so now the regulations And all of this is very important for us to be able to see how it works in the conventional market. Of course, we may see some barriers as well. So that the regulator could just check and they can just really take a look at this, let's say, ancillary point. So we can just do all of this. Maybe someone could just have what we call this all of this. So this is going to be also very important as part of this technologies of this modification so these articles are also very important as part of what we have and some others that are just supplementary to our actual business models and of course it, this does not necessarily need this type of regulation as for what has to do with technology I think that it is a key point as well we know that technology is also moving forward at a quick pace in terms of this creation of new models, new business models, this is key to some platforms for us to be able to do all of this. So as part of this regulation, it is also very important. So we need to just continue moving forward in that regard.
So we're going to have a very important point to have more transaction schemes. And also we can just start work in terms of this resolutions and points and some other situations that we need to take into account as part of what we're doing. So all of this is very, very important and how startups have been moving forward, how they've been moving ahead. And we're just really using this technology, this platform technology. We have this blockchain platforms as well. And of course, we also have good, let's say, criteria and actions that can just ensure this type of security and safety in certain regard. Of course, the market is not just only requiring this type of points so that we can just check technolo technology as well. This is all part of the network and for us to be able to, or, or the grid in general, for us to be able to do all of this. So. I think that this regulation is not really as important as we may think. So I think that this is just going to take us to that last resolution where we're going to be able to expand our projects. All of that is quite conventional, expanded our grid. I think that that's very conventional as well. And then we're going to be able to have, let's say, this type of possibilities and other elements that are also very important, very interesting, and that could just quickly take us to some sort of improvement in terms of what the ner network is doing. So I believe that that's one of the main points and that's what I wanted to mention regarding innovation and everything that is related to this use of technologies and also just for us to be able to improve our business models and for us to improve our grid performance and based on all of these technologies focused mainly on this technology production and we're just making the most of these costs to the extent possible as well. Okay, thank you so much, Pablo. So I think that it is clear to highlight that we have, of course, openness from lawmakers for them to integrate these technologies. And we'll, well, we can have this type of specific detail and for us to be able to have that type of actions that were used in the past and where these regulations needed to specify the very particular procedures and how to conduct all of these transactions now that we are more open to develop this type of self-regulation for these technologies that are now being part of the market. According to that, Mauricio, I would like to ask you to close this panel. What do you think about the opportunities on these technologies? Luis, well, I take uh, the opportunity of closing this panel. You, I think that you have mentioned what we understand as generation of market, not a barrier to enter the market because we already have entered into projects and not install base expected. But I think that we have to establish a specific conditions and I think that it should be mentioned according to the regulations proposed by the grid. On long term, according to the bid in 2014, we have to put into the table how the creation, according to the importance of regulated market, how is the tariffs are providing real incentive to contracts at a long term. Innovation in the market that I think that we should discuss according to the reform made by CRE. If we're talking about flexibility as resources, I think that it will be worthwhile as an innovation item how we will be covering complementarity. I think that from the consultancy side, we need to see how solar and wind will be complementary how we will be incorporating it, thinking that the finisher product will be optimizing the water-based installation. So we have to cover that item as well. How they will be granted and how they will be 
executing those projects because we cannot ex wait 10 years to have expansion works, consolidated expansion works to come about. And the other one is, how are we going to undertake technological change? The mystified, the over-installation issue, we have seen that the expansion of the generation and charges for reliability, thinking of overcharge is inefficient, but we know that are others that are not declared as an expansion, but enable you to have new projects coming in. So what will be our approach from the regulation standpoint with the need of having less pollutant energy and much more affordable energy? Panel members are also talking about active participation on the demand, yes, Large consumers are participating as traders. It's a trend that has been massified, and they are looking to manage a portfolio for the offer. But those that cannot make a trading company, how is this restriction? Because one single trader will be representing one user that takes out the opportunity of having an portfolio of offers. I insist we are seeing projects coming in, but we need to have optimization opportunities that could be framed within the agenda proposed by CRE for this year and for year 2021. Thank you, Mauricio. Before concluding, I would like to hear Jorge about what the Mauricio just said about non-regulated. Very quickly, think that the market rules that we are reviewing are not only at a wholesale market. One of the things that we are reviewing, if we can flexibilize the market so the tariffs can be stated, thinking in a portfolio of tariffs. Well, the user can decide according to the offers in the market. That is response to the demand and other things in the system. But what can happen in a middle term is that we won't have a regulated market as such and that the companies will go and buy a portion of energy for those users that don't want to benefit from competition. Something similar to state tariff. It is important to review as well the trading document. What is the vision of trading for gas to the future? It's a fundamental element to know what we are going to be developed as a wholesale market. And thank you all, and thank you for the invitation. Muy buenas perspectivas. Um, well, thank you very much to, to the panel. Um, I would like to um, let the audience know that the next panel will be in this same stage area, so please do not go anywhere. And in the meantime, we have um, another quick uh, video from our sponsor, NL Green Power. We'll see you all momentarily for panel number three. Thank you.